welcome students in this class we will be learning about what is known as the template string now this is very important because it allows us to lessen the lines of concatenation sentences in the program so what it does is that it helps us in creating a template for us that's it so this template can be used multiple times now the best way is to start with an example and then make sure the topic is well understood so that's exactly what i'm going to do i'm going to give you an illustration so that you are in a better position to understand that so foremost what we do is we start with the boilerplate so let me go and change the title the title is going to be template string example and then i would give a link i want the css file so that you can see the output in a better manner type for this is text and then the document href is going to be css slash okay i will be using the same style sheet now the idea is to create two input boxes and a submit button what i will do is this is called a salary forecaster so this is an application i'm interested in designing probably i have a h2 tag and then say salary forecaster so it can predict the salaries of people with professional qualification we need to have a input input box so i'm going to give a value and then i need to have an id so the id that i want to give is name and the value is say language so i'll copy this and i want two boxes and i also want to have a label label is enter your platform so that would be the case probably i'll also copy this and enter your experience and that looks fine probably i'll give a break statement so if i were to show you okay so this is how it is going to look salary forecaster and the css file which we are using is this this is the file which we are using i will put this file also for you all to use them so you can take the css code and make use of it so having obtained this so this is how it works so salary forecaster you enter the language you are working and your experience so this should be different so let us go back to the program and change this this is going to be experience and this is going to be exp okay so i have got that now i need to give a button click so i'm going to say button and then an id i'll give a id is equal to btn1 and on click event has to be initiated on click is equal to i want to give a function this function would be triggered when the button is clicked and this one is going to be submit so let me show you how the page looks so this is how it is so somebody is interested in getting a diagnosis of themselves suppose they are working in a certain language for 5 years they can put in the language and then they can place their experience and click submit as of now nothing is getting triggered so when they click submit there would be a uh, output so that is what we are trying to get at now after we have finished this it's time for us to start the script so we will have to 
start with the script tag and then the function and the name of the function we have to open the parenthesis now I need to capture the input so I'm going to say var a is equal to document dot get element by id and then I'm going to give the name of the element that's going to be named there. and I need to get the value so it's going to be this now I will copy this and then I will paste it so in this case I want to have another variable getting the experience so get element by id in this case it's going to be exp so I have captured the name of the language or platform the person is working along with the experience the person has put in. Now I need to also have a HTML tag. So I'm going to say h3. h3 id is equal to display. So this is going to display the output. So in this case var I'm going to say d is equal to document dot query selector. So this is the command we will use and you will have to capture the display. So it's going to be channel display and once we have captured the tag we will have to use the variable in getting the output now we cannot simply give the output as such so we will have to make some testing here so that's exactly what i'm going to do so i'm going to put a control statement so if a is equal to javascript so if we if the person has entered javascript javascript and the number of experience say a1 is equal to say five years if this is what the person has entered then the salary for this person would be hundred thousand dollars probably I can give it as a string so I'm going to say dollar hundred thousand uh, per annum hundred thousand a year or probably now the rates have gone up so it's going to be 120,000 this is the average salary a uh, JavaScript developer is earning. So once I have given this, what I need to do is I would have to display it after the loop. Now this is one conditional loop. As I mentioned to you in the previous classes, I have taught you how to embed a code with multiple conditional statements. But I'm just giving an illustration for one particular case. Probably if you want, you can add multiple cases. Now, having obtained this, or I should say having given this, I need to get it displayed. So I'm going to say d dot inner HTML is equal to, this is the usual way we give, estimated, right there. We can only give an estimation, estimated salary. And then I need to give a space this is to make the output better so now we need to display the language right so it's going to be a the language which has been entered and then a concatenation sign a symbol and then the statement is and then probably another space and the salary which we have allotted for the programmer or for the experienced professional and then we will have to also state it whether it's for every three months or every six months so those types of paying are also existing right in the industry so depend upon the value that the person is bringing so this is for an annum so this is the end of the script now there are a few things you will have to note you see the number of concatenation symbols I'm using you see now this is just for one line just for one line now if you are using a system or developing a application which is very large then this same thing would drastically change to say several hundreds of lines or even thousands of lines we don't know so I'm going to show you the output so this is the basic application and uh, this is how it looks 
So the person is entering the language, right? Say Java script is the language and the person has got five years of experience and then he or she wants to know the package that they would be getting. So upon entering the language and the experience, they will have to click submit. You see that estimated salary for JavaScript. So this is what we have got. So now there is some space problem there. So, so clearly you can see that the spacing is not there. So let me just go back. So estimated salary. I need to give some space there. I need to give some space there. And then save it. And then go back and I need to give JavaScript again. Don't give any other language because we haven't written code for that. So it will throw an exception if you are giving anything else. So say five years. So five years submit. So you see that estimated salary JavaScript is so much. So this is what we have got. Probably one thing we can do is estimated salary for. We can just add that for and then instead of saying this or we can say will be. Just save it and then go back and put the language there, put the experience there so that you have a better presentation. So this is what the output looks like. Estimated salary for JavaScript will be 120,000 per annum. Now the objective of this particular application is to show you the use of template string. So that is important. So now as I mentioned to you, this particular code has got many concatenation signs and then we need to be very much bothered about giving spaces and things like that. But we can avoid all of this. So I'm going to comment all of this and then I'm going to start my inner HTML. Now for this, for template string, the first thing you need to start with is called as a backtick. So you got to place a backtick. This is called as backtick. This is present as the first key in the second row. This is the very first key which will be present on the second row of your keyboard. So just place the key and type whatever you want. You can say estimated salary for the language. And now to place the variable. Now to place the variable what you want me to do is just place a dollar sign. Place a parenthesis and include the variable name. That's it. And then you can just go on writing whatever you want to write. It is given to be as. Again you want to give a variable. You place a dollar sign. Open the parenthesis and then type the variable name. That's it. So simple as that. When you have done, just close and close it with a back tick and place a semicolon to save the file. Now what have you done here? All these spacings and concatenation has been gotten rid of. Now every time you cannot be comparing yourself to the output and then coming out and then making a, a arrangements because these are all it's it's not part of what I say is intelligent coding. So we need to get rid of those things. So that is exactly what we have done. So this line is nothing but the epitome of intelligent coding. It's not just one sentence. You can simply go on uh, just entering the number of sentences that you like. All you need to do is just place the variables that you want. And these variable names can change. It doesn't matter. So I will just go back and refresh it. And then I will enter the language and the years of experience and then I'll say submit. You see that estimated salary for the language JavaScript is given to be. You see how beautiful it is. The flow is so smooth. So the takeaway point in this coding illustration is this. If you want to have something that is highly precise and which is the epitome of efficiency whenever it comes to displaying sentences in the program you need to use what is called as template string and I've given you a practical application by means of this salary forecaster how exactly we can use the template string so having mentioned this we will wrap up for this class